Hey everyone, today I am in the shop again working on Clyde's. 27 days to Rocky Mountain Race Week and I gotta have Clyde ready to go. It's been a lot of late nights, long weekends, and everything in between. A lot of car parts orders and all of that, but I wanna show you where I've gotten so far with the build. car things with other streetcar people. Uh, if you guys have not yet, please hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. So up front on Clyde, I ended up getting the alternator all finished up, mounted, the water pump and everything is installed. The electric water pump, the big Mazir 55 gallon a minute pump is over there. Uh, it's all installed, came up, put two bungs here. These are um, dash 12s and then the bottom is a dash 16 that comes off the pump. So uh, it kind of fought where to put the pump. As you guys can see, the pump is extremely tight in the engine bay. Uh, it just barely clears the engine plate by just a little bit, and then the uh, radiator as well. Super tight. I'm hoping this isn't an issue. Should be okay. If not, I might have to make this line a little different. Uh, but everything seemed to kind of work out. I am very space limited for fans, but I got some really small fans and hopefully it's enough to cool it. Salty runs on two fans, but really it only ever uses one uh, unless you get like 90 degree day and a bunch of traffic. And that fan on Salty is about a 900 CFM fan. And so that runs pretty good. So what I've done is I've got two of these little itty bitty guys and they're gonna fit right here. Kind of like that. Uh, and hopefully this works out. Um, so one there, one will be slightly over here. Um, and each one of these fans is a 500 CFM fan. It's a little small. So hopefully this is enough. Semi worried about the fans uh, not having enough cooling, but it's kind of what I got to do. Uh, hopefully it's enough. And... We'll see. I'm hoping that the car cools a little bit better than like the LS stuff since it is an aluminum block and it's in a lighter car and there's not all the turbo stuff. So same airflow, slightly smaller uh, radiator, aluminum block. So hopefully it works out and it stays cool driving on this trip and then I can keep driving it wherever. So the radiator is fully mounted now. I got the regulator mounted on a Gen 5 LT. It uses this mechanical pump. So you just kind of can deadhead it here. Um, so fuel comes into the regulator, back to the return, and then out of the regulator comes up here and feeds the mechanical pump. So that's all in. Ended up getting a, I think this is just like an LS1 dipstick, and then cut and move the mount tab off of it uh, to have it fit the direct injected LT engine. Um, ended up getting like a low car dipstick, but when I ordered it, it was super short and it wasn't gonna work. So I ended up having to just take some 6A in line and making it quite a bit longer so then it can fit. Ended up adapting this Willwood brake master cylinder uh, to the stock location, just made a little adapter plate and mounted it there. So still gotta plumb the brakes. It's something pretty big project that's still gotta be done, but shouldn't be too terrible. Uh, finished putting the exhaust in all the way. And then one of the big projects I worked on for a while was this tunnel here. It has some light so you can see it. So that big hole that I had to cut for the 6L80 transmission is now filled back in, sealed in, and I have a transmission tunnel. So I built a uh, template and then transferred it to a regular piece of material and then uh, welded it all in and then ended up sealing it with like some Tiger Bond stuff. So then uh, it's waterproof. I put a little sealant underneath as well to just help seal it off and all of that. 
I ended up getting some power wires ran in here, uh, power and ground. Going to put some lugs up here up front, and uh, then I can tie into anything that's in the engine bay. And then I'm going to start mounting and tying in all the PSI harness into that as well once I get the power back to the main car. I need to get power back to the main car so then I can turn the key on, make sure everything powers up, and then start tracing out which wires. Like uh, for the PSI harness, you need to know where the 12 volt signal is, 12 volt switched. Uh, then there's some fan wires, a couple other things. So uh, to tie in, so then you still use like the stock key whenever you're doing swaps like that. And it's super nice to be able to just pop in, hit the key, not have some goofy switch or anything like that. Back here in the back, I ended up building the battery tie down to make it legal for the track. And anytime you remote mount a battery in a car, you need a power switch, a power kill switch in the back of the car. Uh, so sometimes people will mount these outside the car and then you have this big silver switch, but uh, use this relocate, mounted it, and then it's got this push pull, push on, push off for power. So then this will all get wired together. The main power will come from the lugs here and then these will tie to the battery so then you can kill the power to the whole car. Uh, safety features, so going on race week, you definitely need to make sure that you pass tech at the track so then you can actually go to the event. As I lift up the car, you guys can see that the car is definitely starting to come down. Uh, the front end was way high and now it's starting to put weight in the car. It's starting to get it lower. It's still a little high in the back, but there's no fuel in the tank, no back seat in the car, nobody sitting in the car and all that, which would help the rear weight bias. But otherwise it's starting to come down. It's definitely not some super low car by any means. Uh, which has actually worked out for the rear end, which I'll show you guys here in a second. Shout out to my dad on putting the rear end housing together uh, and Ray for giving me the old housing. He had an old nine inch laying around. We took it, cut it. Uh, my dad ended up cutting it. I ended up ordering all the housing ends, the axles and everything from Quick Performance. They sent us a dimension on how wide to cut it and everything else. And my dad took that dimension, cut it, we got some tabs, he cut those, modified them to work with the stock four link and mount it right back into the stock location, measured everything over, and actually the measurements worked out. So the drive shaft ended up right in the tunnel, uh, got some just regular G-body um, type S10, I guess, brakes from Quick as well. It's their bolt-on kit, it just barely clears the wheel. Uh, but everything, I couldn't, I couldn't have been more happy with how this turned out. It went in so easy. The only major modification, not even major, we had to make was bending the uh, cross-link bar here. So this right here needed a little bend to clear the pumpkin here because the stock one, it looks like a little 9-inch, the stock housing does, but it's just not as big. So now that is all in, all at good, and then ended up getting a drive shaft. And as you guys can see, it gets a little tight up here, but it should work out really good. With the 6L80, I bought this billet shaft as uh swap it over to a 1350 yoke uh, since the stock one had like a big rubber mount and everything else and had a different type of drive shaft so now it has a slip uh, yoke drive shaft on it so the adjustment is here not in the back of the transmission like a lot of old school transmissions are but otherwise I think it's going to be pretty good got some clearance not a ton but for this to go up and hit it'd have to get probably five or six inches of travel up and maybe it does, but as of right now, I think we're going to be okay. I mean, even looking at that, <laughs> where this almost flows with the radius of this, it's pretty crazy how well this fits in here for no modifications yet. Uh, I'm not saying that it might not rub or that I might not have to come clearance something at some point, but pretty happy with how it's come out so far. I think it's going to be okay to start with for sure. Um, and then here's the tunnel, as you guys can see from the bottom side. Definitely gained a bunch of clearance so then I can get up to the bolts. I ended up leaving the tunnel just really big up above so then the direct injected pump and wiring and everything else can kind of tuck underneath the firewall. That's what I had to do to get the engine set back a little bit. 6L80's in, engine's in. While the car was out and I was working on some stuff, ended up fully welding the brackets for the steering and all of that. Need to still finish up the uh, arms here. Got them cut, just need to make like a little sleeve so then it fits tighter, it's a little loose. So gonna get those on. And then I should have steering in the car. I also gotta cut a piece of three quarter inch tubing for the actual steering shaft. But otherwise that stuff's gonna come together pretty quick. Uh, get the exhaust finished fully mounted, put the B bands on there and all of that. So that's pretty much it. There's a quick rundown of everything that's been done to the car. Quite a bit of stuff, lots of little stuff, a couple major things that had to get past. 
uh, like the trans tunnel is just something that I was too excited about doing, but it's in, it's done, it's all sealed up. Uh, I ended up ordering, for anybody that's gonna do a 6L80 swap at some point in time, I ended up ordering a power glide shifter like this one here, this quarter stick. Uh, I read somewhere online that it uses the same detents and all of that, um, which is not true. Got the shifter, so that's on a little bit of delays too. I should be a little bit further, but I've messed with that shifter quite a bit to try to see if it would work with the detents and stuff, and it's just not gonna work. Uh, it looks like maybe turbo or 700R4, 4L60E, those detents are about the same, but I don't wanna mess with it anymore. I just went ahead and ordered a 6L80 shifter, uh, which will have the little sport shift if I end up wiring all that in. Uh, there's a couple other boxes that it takes to do that with the like electronic shift in there. Um, but that, few issues here and there, reordering a couple things that weren't gonna work, trying to figure out like the fan issue and all of that. Uh, and then ordering the fans, not having the wiring for the fans because some fans come with it, some don't. And then so I've ordered that stuff. Uh, but a lot of wiring to come, a lot of everything. But the next video you guys see, we'll probably have the car hopefully finished and running, at least on this car. Um, so that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do want to say thank you to April. She's going to take this video, go edit it, and get it up for you guys so I can keep working on this. Alex, for always helping as much as he can he's always over here giving an extra hand on this thing uh and has been a huge part in getting it as far as it is and then my dad for building the rear end uh housing and getting all of that done so i could get it put up in the car and keep rolling with everything else so and then thank you to you guys for watching the videos i appreciate it so much i appreciate all the comments and everything else side note race week is in 27 days but i'm also traveling for a week so i really got 20 days to get this thing done so i better get back to work on it see you guys next time